Hello everyone and welcome back to Modern Minecraft 1.19 where today we're going to be putting together the fusion reactor right behind me. I'm not entirely sure where, but it's going to go back there. Last time we put together the uh, epic turbine and fission reactor, we have a pretty good amount of power, but the fusion reactor is actually where real powered production is made. You don't really put together the fission reactor and the industrial turbine for the power, although it is nice to have a decent amount of power, you know, sitting in here. Really, the reason for why you put this together is for the polonium pellets, and I have already used quite a few of them for, uh, you know, making my mecha suit amazing and i've really enjoyed that now obviously i still need to work on the mecha tool right uh the mecha tool is something i do want to do but i have decided that i would like to put together the fusion reactor first so without further ado let's get into it shall we uh to build the fusion reactor i'm going to need 58 of these reactor frames 20 reactor glass three ports one controller and one laser focus matrix and that is part of the multi-block structure the way i build it today is not the exact way you must build it but this is one of those that cannot be scaled up in mechanism okay uh it has to be built in this size so we'll be building it the exact size i'm also going to be putting together the laser and laser amplifier so that we can charge it up and make it happen and i didn't make any notes for how to make dt fuel because frankly it's not that complicated so we'll be making that again today too uh, so without further ado, 58 of these fusion reactor frames, which will require 58 atomic alloy, 58 polonium pellets, and 58 divided by 4 steel casing, however many that is. So uh, let's get into it and shift click, and I'm literally just going to make 58 of these, however many, I know it has to be divisible by 4, and oh, uh, okay. Blast. Uh, I, I need I need more atomic alloy. I don't know what happened there. My, my math must have been off a bit, uh, but there we go. Okay, so now I've made 60 because again, must be divisible by four. So now I'm going to make the fusion reactor ports and it's just four frames with an ultimate control circuit in the middle. I'm going to shift click this, but I'm only going to make two groupings of uh, two apiece, so four ports. Um, we only need three of them. I'm also going to make the fusion reactor controller, which includes five frames, a basic chemical tank, two uh, ultimate control circuits, and a glass pane. So just going to need one of these. This is the block that you interact with. Next, we're going to make the reactor glass, in which I'm actually not going to make it because I made extra in my previous build. So that, But that is how you make it. You have enriched iron, lead, and glass, and I need 20 of those. Next is going to be the laser focus matrix, which we only need one of them. And it requires four uh, reactor glass and a block of redstone. So no problem there. And then we will, um, yeah, we'll, we'll mess with this later. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and build the multi-block structure first. So the way you build this thing is the way you build any other multi-block structure in mechanism. You start with a solid structure, solid surface. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that uh, in the past, and if you've watched my previous series, as you know this, I've had some issues with this thing. So what I'm really hoping is that I don't have issues this time. <laughs> so the way it works is the fusion reactor is a five by five by five block. And I'm hoping I don't have to chop down this tree. I'm gonna go ahead and just chop down this tree. I, I, I can always plant another tree. It's not a problem. So go ahead and chop this down. There you go. That opens up everything nicely. Okay, so the way you make this is it's a five by five block on the base, but you don't make it a square. You're actually going to make it a circle. So all I did was place down a single block, add the T, and then add one extra block on top of that. So you can see there, that's five blocks across, five blocks across. I etched out the corners. So that is the beginning layer. The second layer is going to include my reactor glass. So go ahead and place this down just like so on all four edges. And then I'm going to place reactor frame along each edge next to the glass. And what this will do is, um, well, finish out the bottom, the second to bottom layer. So that is what we need there. Looks just about exactly right. And for some reason, my, uh, my jet pack is not working. What is going on? Ah, it was disabled to let me jump. Interesting. Okay. Well, now that uh, I've got that figured out. It's getting dark. I don't want to be out here at night. I'm going to go to sleep.
Now here is when the build can get a little bit uh, variable. It's gonna depend on your system. So you're going to need to pump in two separate fuel sources and then pump out the power. You're also gonna need the laser ma uh, focus matrix and you're gonna wanna put it on one of these edges as well where you're going to give it a an injection of power. And I don't recommend putting this in a place where it can damage something. So I'm thinking actually putting it right there. You do want it in the middle on this third layer uh, and in anywhere you want. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna place a reactor glass on either side of that and then frame on either side of that. So you can kind of see what we're getting at here. It's gonna be kind of like a sphere and this middle layer is the middle layer. It's the, it's the, uh, the third layer is the middle layer and it's the thickest layer. So now uh, I'm gonna actually go out with the power here so i'm going to need one of these ports and i'll place that down just like so and you know what while i'm thinking about it i'm going to go ahead and shift right click and set that to output because that is where the power is going to come out and i'm going to put reactor glass on either side of that now uh, i also might end up going out with power on this side as well so might as well set myself up for success and place that there i've got the extra port no reason why i shouldn't and then over here is actually where I'm going to go in with the fuel. So I'm just going to set up the fuel section right here. So I'm going to put two ports, leave them on input, which is the green, and then put reactor glass in the middle. So now you can see I've got frames on the outsides and glass or ports or laser focus matrix or whatever's in the middle between the frames. Uh, and then now what I will do is rebuild the entire structure um in a reverse order so now i'm going to place glass on top of the middles and then place frames next to the glass leaving the corners open and that gives you that spherical shape and then lastly uh so we've already finished all of the glass now this is going to be a solid um what, what do they call this again frame and that frame is going to be every single block on this upper level except the very middle so I'm going to fill in this here, just like so, and then finish off with the fusion reactor controller, just like so. And there you go. We got some red glistening beautifulness right there. So now uh, I can interact with this thing as if I, uh, you know, I wanted to turn it on. But of course, I can't turn it on just yet because I've got several different bits and pieces that need to go in, including where to come out with the power. So next step is going to be the fuel source and how all that's going to work. So uh, first things first, you need to know what that fuel is going to be called. And well, it's not actually DT fuel, but DT fuel is what you have to put in the whole ROM. We'll talk about that in a moment as well. But the two parts and pieces that you need for DT fuel are deuterium and tritium. We're going to start with the deuterium because it will be a little bit more complicated. All you need is an electrolytic separator set up to take in heavy water. Now, to get that, you have to put a filter upgrade in an electrolytic separator. And I haven't made the uh, the filter upgrade yet, so that is something that we'll have to focus on in just a moment. But I'm actually wanting to terraform this a little bit, so I'm going to run over here and grab a little bit of dirt. The art of terraforming. You know, I don't like making my, uh, my places look too artificial, but, you know, sometimes you just got to bring the land up and have it fit your build. Okay, so the pipes are gonna come, uh, well, in reverse. The pipe's gonna come out of these ports and down and over into the chemical infuser. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and place down the chemical infuser. This is the machine that's going to receive both of the gases. And I want both the gases to be created right next door. So this is our electrolytic separator. And um, this one here will be our solar neutron activator. You know what, I'm gonna place these to where they face in this direction so this all makes sense in just a moment i just realized actually that um i need an electric pump all right no problem electric pump the only thing i'm missing now are the upgrades which means i'm gonna need uh some gold and some ingots and you know what the filter upgrade is also something i'm gonna need to make and i'm not sure if i need to make more than one so yeah that's tin okay no problem i'll grab some tin i'll grab some infused alloy i'll grab some glass and we'll put all of this together so to make it the upgrade, like I said, we have to use tin dust, which I've just crushed. And, uh, you know, the typical 
Oh, sometimes I get these backwards. There you go. Filter upgrade. Very good. So a filter that separates heavy water from regular water. So to get to deuterium, you have to have a filter upgrade in your electric pump. I've already put the power and uh, speed upgrades into that. So now let's put the... Um, oh, did I get rid of all my dirt? Well, I'll use cobblestone temporarily. So I'm going to place that down just like so. And this down just like so. And, uh, you know, I'm going to have to have power, aren't I? I haven't actually brought power. Oh, hello. We have ourselves a visitor. You're going to give me anything good? No, you never do, do you? So on second thought, I'm going to work on the tritium first because the tritium is going to come from a quantum entangle porter and this quantum entangle porter also has power. So if I come over here, I'm going to select lithium, which I'll show you where this is coming from in just a moment. It's going to be an output of gases and it's going to be an output of power, but this output of power is not for um, the solar neutron activator, which as you can see is already receiving the lithium and converting it into tritium. This one's the easiest one for sure. You guys have already seen solar neutron activators, by the way. So this thing doesn't need power because it takes power from the sun. It's got the solar panels. Uh, the, uh, the power is actually going to be for the, for, uh, for these two machines. So I'm going to grab, um, let's see, let's see. We got, uh, ult wow. Ultimate, <laughs> ultimate cables. Is that all I have? I don't really want to use ultimate cables for this. I mean, I guess I will. I could probably just use basics as well. But um, but yeah, so we're going to put power here and we'll place down power there. And this will provide power for the electrolytic separator and it'll provide power for the pump. But before the, I put the water, I'm actually going to give this thing uh, power. There you go. It has power. Now let's give it the filter upgrade. So go ahead and throw that into there. Make sure we only need one. We do. Perfect. So now whenever I put down the water... It's going to start pumping water, but it doesn't pump regular water. It pumps heavy water. And now the heavy water needs to be sent over to the electrolytic separator, which means it needs basic mechanical pipes. Me basic is fine for now. So we're going to place this down just like so. And now there you go. The electrolytic separator now can receive deuterium by separating the deuterium from the oxygen in the heavy water. And I'm going to, of course, set the oxygen into dumping excess that way you know once we start using deuterium the oxygen doesn't max out now i need to bring both of these the tritium and the deuterium the green and the red out of there and into the chemical infusion chamber and i'm going to use some ultimate pressurized tubes in this case uh because i just feel like that's the better decision so we're going to place those down just like so and i'm also going to place these things down of course okay this one's already ejecting tritium that's great. This one is uh, unfortunately not ejecting deuterium. So let's select gases, go to the front. You can eject output one there. There you go. Okay, so now tritium's in here, deuterium's in here. It's coming into the chemical infuser and it has no power. So I have to give it power. Uh, this is why I wanted all these things to be close by to each other. So we'll place that down just like so. And there you go. Now this chemical infuser is creating DT fuel. Now, don't get confused. You do not put DT fuel into the fusion uh, the, uh, fusion reactor. You actually put deuterium individually, which we'll place down there, and uh, tritium, which we'll place down here, into the fusion reactor. And you don't want those two to interact, so let's get that down. And now, if I come up here and go to fuel, you can see that it does have in its own little tank deuterium and tritium. So that's perfect. So there's only a couple little details that we have to get done, but naturally it's already getting dark again. I can't believe how hap how fast the sun decides to go down on me when I'm having so much fun putting de these machines together. So what we need to start this thing up is a whole ROM. And a whole ROM is part of the equation, not the full equation, but what we need to get that done is gold dust and coal. It's all we need. So I'm gonna grab four gold, and one coal, which I almost thought that was coal. That's obsidian. So now we'll uh, blast our way over to here. I'm going to, I'm going to attempt to not turn it into dust and just see what happens. No, it, it has to be turned into dust. Fair enough. So I'm going to uh, crank through this. I think just a regular coal will work. So, so far so good. So we'll take our four gold dust out. I've turned auto sort off. That way it stays a stack. And let's place the coal together. And there you go. 
there is our whole rum. Now the whole rum is just a key that gives this machine its initial power. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the chemical infuser that has the DT fuel. I'm gonna put the whole ROM right there and fill it up with only 10 millibuckets, as you can see there, 10 of DT fuel, uh, DT fuel. And that's it. Uh, the whole ROM is ready to go. Now, of course, we're not done, but that portion is done. So now it has all the fuel that it needs. Now the last bit has to do with this laser focus matrix. So um, I need to do a little bit more crafting. I didn't do it before, uh, but what we're gonna be needing to make is a laser, of course, and I think I've got the uh, the energy tablets. You know what, let me grab a few of these blue circles here. There you go. I'm gonna grab, I've got the energy tablets over here, so I'm gonna grab a couple of those. And let's put together this laser. It's just reinforced alloy steel casing, two energy tablets, and a diamond. And then I'm also going to grab the uh, laser amplifier, which requires a basic energy cube. And I think I've got one um, here or, ah, okay. I've got to give it two iron and I've got to give it two iron. Why, why don't you want my iron? I don't understand. I'll put it here. Ah, there we go. Okay, it just it didn't it didn't like me grabbing it and putting it individually, but after I put it in a separated stack and shift clicked it over, it worked. So now I've got myself a basic energy cube, and now I can use it with the laser amplifier. It's just a bunch of steel, which I don't think I have. Yeah, and an additional diamond. And what this is going to do, and you guys will see in just a moment, is let me see three, six, seven, and a diamond. And what this is going to do is it's going to receive a charge from the laser. And we'll get all of this from the induction matrix. So let's just start off by putting it together and I'll explain as I go. So first things first, put some cobblestone, cobblestone, cob, no, cobblestone. There we go. And I want to place the amplifier facing in this direction. And there you go. So now you can see it has, what happened to my cobblestone? Why did it destroy it? I mean, it must've had a, a little bit of a charge just by me holding it, which is funny because that's not how you're supposed to do it. But okay, so this laser amplifier now is receiving or can receive power from the laser. So now what we need to do is uh, place down a couple other cobblestones and I'll place this laser down just like so. It is now giving this laser amplifier a charge. And let's see, can I, can I tell it not to eject... That would be fantastic. Okay, it's set to energy contents. That's interesting. No, no, no. I, 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 uh, interesting. Okay, so, uh, I have to give it a redstone pulse. And so, what I'm gonna need to do is place some cobblestone on top of this. I got a shift click or next to it. I, mean, I wonder if next to it'll work. I, on top of it looks nicer though. Here, let's get on top of this thing. Shift click. There you go. I have a stick and a cobblestone in my inventory specifically for this purpose. And here is my lever to give it a redstone pulse. There you go. So now once this thing is receiving power, it won't eject its, uh, its laser out until it is fully charged. And that's going to take a little bit of time. So ideally I would use a quantum entangle portal, but I don't think I have another one as of right now. Uh, so. Honestly, the better way to do this would be to use a physical pipe network. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set up a physical pipe network. Okay, whenever I say pipe, I actually mean cable. So the cable is going to come out of this induction matrix and physically, oh, I've only got six of these. Do I have, do I have a decent amount of any cables? I really don't. Okay, I've got to go make more. Hold on. But yeah, the cable is going to be physically connecting the two and that's actually going to allow the thing to charge really, really fast. So that's actually like that's a that's a good thing uh, i'm not going to argue or complain much maybe a little so i made a full stack of the basic cables i'm going to upgrade them to the advanced and then the elite and then the atomic alloy version the the ultimate um and and I, i'm i'm i don't necessarily like to spend this much on something like this but uh i do have need for more of these in a in, in kind of like the same project so i'm going to I'm just going to go ahead and use the, the good stuff. So uh, output here and all the way down. And remember, the ultimate uh, universal cables can transfer 8 millijoules per tick. 
while the basics can only transfer 200 or two uh oh wait that's pipes um do i have any of the low levels for example right now no no i don't fine i'll use the the internet my own version of the minecraft internet so a basic can hold 8000 kilojoules whereas the ultimates can hold 8 mil 8 megajoules so that's uh that's a pretty significant increase and i think that this is going to allow this setup to charge up very very fast faster than ever um and that's been that's been one of the themes of this particular series is anything that i'm repeating definitely doing it better this time so i'm gonna hit that there you go and now it is receiving charge oh that's fantastic okay so now i'm gonna use this dirt cover this back up do a little bit of inventory management and while this thing is charging up um well, I really don't nearly need to do anything else, I guess, until it does charge up. But this is this is fan. Oh, I know what I need to do. I need to set up the the outputs now. Now that I've done the inputs, I forget. Do Paxels create? Oh, they do. Excellent. Okay, I couldn't get the atomic disassembler to create the path uh, or to recreate the path. So I'm gonna keep the Paxel on hand just in case I need to do that again. In fact, I'm pretty confident I will because once I get this thing running, the power is gonna come out of this port, and I want to send it out and into this induction matrix and i want to do it through an input port so that means that the input is right here um so i guess i'll just do more trenching and uh and get it over there very awesome it's always a good idea to have your major power production hardwired i mean you know quantum entanglement porters are great and all but what if something goes wrong you know it's it's always better to have it hardwired so there you go now we have an output out of here uh, I'll cover it up all the same and then I guess it's a bit of a waiting game for the laser now um, I do want to mention this there are other pieces of the puzzle if you want to use more lasers and it'll speed up the process significantly because what you need to do is if you're using joules you need to get to one gigajoule or 20% total capacity here before you flip this switch and ignite the fusion reactor that's the minimum so in order to speed this up because this laser can only do so much it's kind of a wuss like the cables are great the laser itself is not so good so another way to speed this up would be to make a couple more or many many more lasers and use what is it called a laser um tractor beam where everything kind of focuses in together from this laser amplifier in uh but this thing can receive inputs from five other directions so you know like you put a laser on this side on the bottom on this side and on the top but then you'd lose the ability to flip this switch here so anyway just thinking out loud so i guess i've got to wait because i don't feel like making more lasers and uh yeah or you know i have i have a theory i have a theory actually that i could probably charge this thing up faster with my mecha suit than i than this thing is doing so as soon as this laser goes away uh i'm just gonna grab it and hold it in my inventory and i think it'll charge it up a lot faster let's just see been holding it for a little while i'm going to place it down and just make sure that yes it does hold its charge it's only 54 megajoules it didn't go that much higher uh but i do think it was going up faster than using the laser so that's a shame but you know i did things a little bit of, out of order getting the mecha suit all maxed out and stuff so i'm just gonna stand right here you know what i'm gonna go stand on my charge pad too and uh yeah i think that i'll have this thing maxed out and uh and ready to go in no time oh dang wow wow that was fast um uh, <laughs> uh that's that's the superior way if you don't have the mecha suit yet then you know use the laser and all but yeah the okay so i stood on this um charge pad and so that took advantage of the gas burning generator that's still hooked up i know kind of crazy and um it, it took it took advantage of that and it took advantage of the mecha suit doing the uh, charge distribution thing to stuff that's in my inventory. So pretty awesome. Pretty dang awesome, I have to admit. So now, all right, we are ready to turn this thing on. Uh, one quick note. So yeah, I've, I've connected the wires, the pipes to the induction matrix. So we're good to go. Um, everything is connected. One thing to note is the fusion reactor is kind of awesome because everything about it is... Um, completely renewable so all the fuel and everything that goes into it is completely renewable you just have to make sure that you're you're not staying up overnight if this thing is running because the tritium will run out uh 
And the only real thing it causes, the problem that it causes is that it will max out your induction matrix is super fast. Um, and then you can't run your fission reactor and your turbine because your fission reactor and your turbine will explode if the power maxes out while the fusion reactor does not. Yes, you heard me right. You cannot blow up the fusion reactor. You can have the, the power maxed out. You can, uh, you can, you can turn up to really high burn rates and everything. You just simply cannot explode the fusion reactor, which is pretty sweet. So I say, let's crank this baby on. Watch this, watch, watch. It's going to send out a burst of laser power. Boom. And yep, this thing is now back to zero. I'm going to let it charge up already. And yes, you can see the reaction taking place inside of this fusion reactor. Let me get rid of all that information. All right, there you go. It's cranking. Now it is getting dark, so blast. Okay, now let's uh, let's let's enjoy this thing. So first things first, um, it is on minimal chart, like minimal output, and and it's going to be putting a megajoule per tick in this induction matrix. This is the minimum burn rate. And I believe because these machines are both maxed out completely, uh, there's no issue with it um, like going net negative. In fact, like you can see this tritium right now, it's going up. So I'm burning, but I'm not burning more than I'm producing. And the same thing over here, you can see this one is, uh, is still going up too. So I believe unless there's been changes, this setup here can handle up to a 20 burn rate. So let's go see what happens. Oh, by the way, you can see that it it did take your whole ROM whenever it um, started up. So if you ever like turn the fusion reactor off and you want to turn it back on, then you have to use, you have to create another whole, whole ROM and put DT fuel in that. But it's not a big deal. You'll notice the plasma goes up. Even if this goes all the way up to the top, it cannot explode. Same thing with this. This is where your power would go. And this is, I believe, uh, steam or something. You don't have to worry about that either. So injection rate, deuterium, tritium, and I'm guessing this is where DT fuel would end up. So let's put this on eight. And what that's going to do is that's going to increase the speed and the amount of power this thing produces from two to eight, which is four times. And let's just see if these numbers are still going up or going down. Looks like, yes, deuterium is going up and tritium is also going up. So we're not, uh, we're not net negative in our fuel just yet. And this thing is filling up at uh you would assume four megajoules per tick but it takes a little while for it to crank up so it's getting there but it's getting there slowly uh i i just want to find that number where it can't keep up anymore the, the the current rate i believe 20 is actually that number i might be wrong but i'm hoping i'm not yes okay so deuterium is flatlined and tritium is flatlined so that means that if you wanted to burn at a higher rate than 20 Let's say, uh, let's just go just higher, right? 22. So now the amount of uh, deuterium in this tank is going down or this uh, this tube is going down and same thing with the tritium. So if you wanted to burn at, let's say the theoretical max, which I believe is 98, cause I don't think, let's try hundred. I don't think, no, you can't. So 98 is the theoretical max, right? So to burn at this rate, and you could see the number is gonna be dropping drastically fast. It's just crazy fast how fast that drops. So you'd have to set this thing up five times with five separate independent pieces to fill, to, to, to keep your fuel from going down to zero. Um, and you have to consider if you're going to like go offline or whatever, or, or, or like, like go FK, AFK, you have to deal with the problem of uh, tritium not being produced during the day or during the nighttime. So you have to actually make double the tritium that you're burning. So you might actually have to set that up 10 times in order for that to work. But let's just be honest. Like nobody needs 98 megajoules per tick. Like that's a ridiculous amount of power. You don't need it. You, you really don't. So um, I am okay with really staying at two until I need more. Like if, if there comes a situation where I need more, then I can make up to 20 safely, safely and easily. Now, the next journey is the mecha tool, right? I've got to, I've got to complete the mecha suit series. You know, it's a mini series. It's not quite as eventful. I like, I like building the machines and seeing the results in the world, right? This is kind of fun, but there is something that you can do with all of this massive, insane power. 
and all of this massive insane power um, really can't be used anywhere else. You have to build the supercritical phase shifter. And that supercritical phase shifter is needed to make antimatter, and that antimatter is needed to make some of the best items in the game. So, <laughs> uh, now you know what's coming for the next couple of episodes. So, guys, that's going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions on how to get the fusion reactor going, uh, let me know in the comments or on my Discord server. Link for that is down below in the description. And don't forget to join my server with the $10 membership tier. And you can uh, come tour my world. And, of course, we have a lot more stuff that I want to build. But, uh, you know, better say, or better uh, earlier to the game. What, what is it? Something about the worm. Early bird gets the worm. Yeah, something like that. So uh, join me on the server. Thanks for tuning in. And I will see you all next time.